What's up everyone, my name is Chance with Real Sim Gear. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Microsoft Flight Simulator on your PC. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is purchase Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I'm going to just go to flightsimulator.com and then I'll click on store. And I'll scroll down to the bottom and we have these three different packages. I'll show you those in just a second. And then we get to this page that has the three different options. You have standard, deluxe, and premium deluxe. So what's the difference? The difference is essentially how many aircraft you get and how many handcrafted airports or really detailed airports that you get. So as you see here in the standard package, you have a 152, a 172, you have a couple diamond aircraft right here, you have a Cub. In the deluxe package, you get five more planes and five more airports. So you have another Cessna 172 that's not the G1000. So uh, if you're used to flying six packs, you might want to go with this deluxe package. You get a couple diamonds and a Baron. And then the premium deluxe, you get the SR22, which is something that we're going to use for a bunch of demos in the future. So I'm going to go with the premium deluxe. So scroll down and click on the premium deluxe and click on the drop down. There's PC and Steam. If you already have Steam on your computer, you can go through Steam. I'm just going to click on PC and go the Xbox route. You have an option to get it with the game pass and save $24. Game pass is uh, $10 a month. So if that's worth it to you to save the 24 bucks, great. I'm just going to click on buy and then you can sign in or create an account with Microsoft. I created one right before this, so I'm just going to log in. So if you don't already have a Xbox profile associated with your Microsoft account, it'll ask you to create one. I'm not gonna click any of these boxes right here. So I'm just gonna click I accept. Now that I've signed in, it's kicked me back out to this purchase page and you'll see that Microsoft has created a username for me, KeenCashew35267. You can definitely change that to whatever you want. I think you get a one-time code. Uh, I like it, I'm gonna keep it the same. So I'm just gonna click on buy and add a payment. And cool, I'll just click close. And then it says now I own this. So I'll click on install, choose PC and launch. Open the Xbox app, let's play install and i recommend installing it on uh, m.2 ssd if you have one that way it loads up and performs really fast and then now it's going to just download the installer now we'll click on play now it's going to load up and go through a couple different screens So when you initially load up, it's gonna to come to this page and a robot is going to narrate the entire thing. That'll go away as soon as you click next. You don't have to change anything on this page. I would just keep it the same. I'm gonna click next. And then we get to this download page. You can see it's 125 gigabytes. And then it gives you an opportunity to change the location where you download the game. And I highly recommend that you do this. This app data folder is actually hidden and you don't have all the permissions in it on your PC. So you might run into some problems if you were ever to download some third party software or aircraft and try to put it in there, it might not let you. So to avoid all that, I'm just going to change the location. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna to go to my local disk C and I'll make a new folder, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and cool. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm just going to click update. This download is going to take a few hours depending on your internet connection. So we'll check back in a second when it's done. And we are good. So now it's gonna give you an opportunity to change your graphic settings. This depends heavily on your PC specs. So if you're running something like an i5 or a Ryzen 3 with only a couple gigabytes of VRAM, then you're gonna to wanna to go on the lower end. Uh, they recommend at least eight gigabytes of VRAM and 32 gigabytes of RAM with an i7 or an i9. That's gonna allow you to push it to ultra. On this PC, I'm running an i9 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM on a 3080 and 32 gigabytes of regular RAM. So I'm going to try ultra. And then if you have a good internet connection, you can choose if you want to do data streaming or no streaming. So if you have a slow internet connection, maybe go with the no world. I'm just going to click on this one. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to click on next. This right here, if you have a yoke or a throttle installed, it's going to give you an opportunity to customize the settings. Most of the time it reads it accurately. And so you can just make sure it's recognizing it at least and go ahead and click on next. If you have some real sim gear hardware or avionics, then I'll show you how to set that up in later videos. So here it's gonna give you an opportunity to change your assistance. And so if you are very new to aviation and you've never flown a plane before and you just wanna kinda of have fun and play the game, then keep it on easy. If you wanna challenge yourself like you're flying the real aircraft, then I would select hard. So I'm gonna click on hard and then I'll click done. 
Okay, now you are officially loaded in. And so you get to this home screen where it has discovery flights, world map, flight training, activities, and a marketplace. So um, let's go through these really quickly just so you have an idea of what's in here. This first section for discovery flights, places that you can just drop into, Mount Everest, Egypt, Bora Bora, and then there's some extra downloads down at the bottom. If you wanna do some flying in Japan, San Francisco, Yosemite National Park, that's super cool. Then I'll just go down here to the bottom left and I'll click back. And now we're back to the main page and we'll scroll over to World Map. So World Map is where you can create your own flight plans. So customize your A to B. You can select your departure airport. Um, I'll go ahead and click on this and I'll click on Montgomery Field, KMYF. And let's say I want to go to, I don't know, Santa Monica. So I'll just go to Santa Monica. And then you can add more waypoints over here with the search bar and the nav log section. You can change your altitude. You can click on fly when you're ready to go fly. We'll do that in a second. I'm just going to click escape and then come over to this flight training tab. So this is where you can learn just some of the basics, basic handling, takeoff and landing, VFR navigation. If you wanna do bush flight training, it's funny they have an Icon A5 for bush pilot. IFR navigation at the bottom. Okay, click on back, click on the activity section. And now these are pre-made scenarios that you could go through. And so there's the flight training section, there's landing challenges, bush trips that you already have downloaded into the game. And then you can scroll over for some extra downloads. You could purchase this Reno Air Race thing, or you can do the Maverick activities. I've watched some streamers do those that look super fun. So uh, definitely download that and check that out. And then you have custom content. We can download some third party content and do some challenges that way. Okay, so then I'll hit back and we'll go to the last tab, Marketplace. And this is where you can purchase aircraft, handcrafted airports, or extra activities that you could do. So let's say you owned a Bonanza, you could purchase this Bonanza right here for $14.99. And they have all kinds of other stuff. They have a PC-12, a F-18 caravan. So you could spend days searching through this, finding stuff to play with. So I'm gonna click on back and I just wanna show you two more things. These two tabs up here, profile and options. So I'm gonna click on profile and right here you can see how many hours you have or what your pilot level is. You have content manager for anything you download, your logbook to see what type of flight time that you've gotten, as well as my hangar. So you can change the airplane in here and which one you load up with. I just chose the 172 with steam gauges since that's the one I'm primarily gonna be flying. Okay, and then I'll click on this options tab and you'll see that we have general options. So you can kind of go in there and change whatever you want to change. Assistant options, we already messed with that in the beginning where it was easy, medium, or hard. And then you have control options. So I'm going to go ahead and attach our Real Sim Gear Yoke Top Mount Flight Simulator package with a yoke and throttle. That way you can see how to set those up in here and customize them if you want. Okay, guys. So what I have right here is a Real Sim Gear Yoke Top Mount flight simulator package. This closely resembles what you would normally see in a general aviation training aircraft. Essentially, all of this is a bunch of real sim gear avionics mounted onto our metal plate with a throttle, and you can change which throttle that you want there. And all of that is mounted onto a honeycomb yoke, which you can switch out for a virtual fly if you want. So what I have right here are a couple of G5s, dual G5s, very common in GA. Here I have a GMA 350 audio panel, so you can switch between COM1 and COM2 really easily. So you using Pilot Edge, that really increases the immersion. You have a GTN 650 GPS, a Garmin 430 GPS, the GFC 500 Autopilot, and then down here we have a Virtual Fly TQ3 single engine throttle. And then, like I said, we have all that mounted onto a honeycomb yoke. So I just barely connected all this to my PC, and this is typically what you're gonna see when you connect it. So it's gonna say new device connected, and here are the two pieces of hardware that I have connected to it, the flight controls, so the yoke, and then the Virtual Fly throttle. I'll show you guys how to set up all the avionics from Real Sim Gear in later videos. So you can customize it or keep it the same. So I'm just going to click keep default, but I'll show you guys where you can go into and customize it. It's just back at that options menu. So I'll click on options, go over to control options. And now we're going to see the alpha flight controls and the virtual fly. Okay, so you can click on these different pieces of hardware, and then it's going to show you all of the options for you to map the different buttons to different functions. The yoke itself is probably already going to be calibrated. So let's just double check that it is. I'll click on flight controls and then primary flight controls. And now when I move the yoke, I'll move it to the left and the right. It looks like my ailerons are working just fine. That's going to the left and to the right. I'll do the elevator, so I'll push forward and I'll pull back. Okay, looks like those are working just fine. So I'm not gonna change anything, but it's got all these different buttons that you can customize to it. And so you can have your avionics master go on and off. You can do the battery master on and off. So the engine instruments are already mapped to the magnetos. So I just wanna make sure if I turn it off, it shows off. Left mag, right mag, both and start. 
So that's all gonna be default. I haven't changed anything. I'll click on the virtual fly just to triple check that this is working. All that pulls up is the three options for power management. You have your throttle mixture and prop. So I'll click on throttle and I'll just make sure that that's working. That looks good. I'll click on propeller. That's working just fine. I'll click on mixture that's working just fine. And so if you find that they're the opposite, meaning if you go full rich mixture, but it's actually mixture cut off in the airplane, then you can just hit reverse axis right here. That way it does the opposite. All right, guys, that's about it. I'm just gonna go into world map and start our flight plan. Montgomery Tower, Cessna November 801 Alpha, Mike ready at runway 28 right departure to the west. Cessna November 801 Alpha, Mike departure to the west approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 28 right. Cleared for takeoff runway 28 right Cessna 1 Alpha, Mike. So I'll go ahead and click ready to fly. And here we are. And as you can see, the yoke is moving accordingly. My throttle is moving accordingly. I have my mixture, I can go idle cutoff, but the engine's running, so I'll keep that there. And if I wanted to, I could just go take off right now. Looks like I had the magnetos in the start position. That'll pop your alternator circuit breaker real quick. So I'll just go back to both. All right, guys, that wraps up our video on how to set up Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on your PC. I hope that made your life just a little bit easier. If it did, be sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We're gonna be coming out with a bunch of new content on how to set up our real sim gear hardware. And you're also gonna get a bunch of my favorite flying tips on how flying the sim translates to the real airplane. That's all for now. As always, good day, see ya.